This is part 16 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the use of jQuery each function, how to exit from each function, implicit iteration in jQuery, and some performance considerations that we need to keep in mind when using jQuery each function. So what's the use of jQuery each function? jQuery each function is used to iterate over the items in a collection. Let's understand this with an example. Here, we have an unordered list. At the moment, this list contains five list item elements. Within our ready function, $li. So what is this selector going to do? This selector is going to give us a collection of list item objects. Now what we want to do is iterate over each list item and then alert the index position of the list item within that collection and the list item text, that is the name of the country. So we want to loop through each element. So we are going to make use of this each jQuery function. Now this each jQuery function is going to receive two parameters. So basically when we are going to loop through each item we want to execute some piece of code and we are going to specify that code that we want to execute using this anonymous function. Now this anonymous function is going to receive automatically two parameters. The first parameter so the first parameter is the index of the element within this collection and the second parameter is the element itself. So let's alert the index of the element and to that let's append colon and then the element text. So this is going to return us the collection of all list items and on each list item, you know, this anonymous function will be executed and to this function we are passing the index of the item that we are currently iterating over and the element itself and we are alerting the index and the current elements text. So let's save these changes. When we reload the page, we should get the index position of the element and the element text that is the country name. So zero colon US and we should get the index and the name of the country for all countries. Now, if you look at this anonymous function, notice that it has two parameters. Is it mandatory to pass these two parameters every time we use the each function? Not really. You can refer to the element that we are currently iterating over by using this keyword instead of element and that's what you see you know in, in many of the articles on the internet you know instead of using this element parameter you can simply use this keyword okay so this keyword refers to the element that we are currently iterating over and this text method is going to return us the text of that element that we are iterating over okay so when we save these changes and when we reload the behavior should be exactly the same Now, if you don't want to, you know, alert the index, you can get rid of that. That means, since we are not using the index parameter, we can remove this parameter completely. Now, if you look at this anonymous function, notice that it does not have any parameters. Okay, but we are still able to get the text of the element using text function. And we are referring to the element that we are iterating over by using this keyword. So now when we reload this page, we should only get the name of the country. All right, so now let's see how to exit or break from each function. Let's say for some reason, if the country name is UK, then we want to break out of this each function, okay? So to break out of the each function, all you need to do is return false. So Let's copy this. If the text of the element that we are iterating over, if that is equal to UK, then let's return false. Okay, so let's save these changes and let's reload the page. 
So we get the first country printed, which is US. Click OK. We get India. And notice that the next country is UK. And what are we doing within this each function? If the text is UK, we are returning false. So what's going to happen when you return false? When you return false, it's going to break out of that each function, which means for the rest of the elements, this piece of code will not be executed. So once I click OK here, we should not get any more alerts because we have returned false. That means we have you know, broken out of this each function. Now let's discuss about this implicit iteration concept in jQuery. And let's actually understand that with an example. Now let's say we want to change the font color of all these list items to red. And to do that, we can make use of this jQuery CSS function. So let's get rid of all this. OK, so we have the collection returned by this selector. And on each element within that collection, what we want to do is apply a CSS style. What style we want to apply? We want to apply color and we want to set that to red. Okay, so this is going to return us the collection of list item elements and you know we are using the each function to iterate over each list item and then on each list item we are calling the CSS function. Right? and the CSS is a jQuery function. So when we reload this, look at that. All the list item uh, color is changed to red. Now here, we are explicitly iterating over each list item within the collection using this jQuery each function. But you don't really have to do that when you're using CSS jQuery method. Instead of this, what you can do is, look at that, I'm removing that each function call. So what is this going to do? This returns a collection of list item elements. On that collection, I'm directly going to call the CSS function. So what is this CSS function going to do? Implicitly, automatically, this is going to iterate over each element within this collection and then apply this color uh, property to that element. So here, there's no need to explicitly iterate over each element within the collection using an each function because many jQuery methods implicitly iterate over elements within the collection. CSS is one of them. So when I save these changes, when we reload this, you know the behavior should exactly be the same. So here, though we are not explicitly iterating over each element within the collection, this is still going to apply the color red to all the elements because implicitly this jQuery function is going to iterate over each element within the collection. So that is what is called as implicit iteration in jQuery. Now, let's discuss some of the performance considerations that we need to keep in mind when using jQuery function. And let's understand that with an example. So what we want to do is include a div element here. And let's give it an ID. Let's call it div result. So what we want to do is display all these countries in this div element. OK, so dollar li. So what is this selector going to do? This is going to return us a collection of list item elements. So we're going to use this each function to iterate over each element within that collection. OK, so what do we want to do? We want to find this div element. So how are we going to find the element? So this div element has got an ID. So we use the ID selector, hash. And what is the ID of the element? Div result. So find the element by ID. And we want to set the HTML for that div. And what should be the HTML? We want each country's name. OK, so I'm actually going to make a copy of this one and paste that here. So what does this mean? We are taking the HTML of that div and then setting that as the HTML. OK, for the first time, the div is empty, so it's not going to really add anything. To that, let's append an HTML break 
and to that let's append the current elements text okay so one line of jquery code here so what are we doing find the div element with id div result and to that append what we already have within that development at the moment you know on first iteration will not have anything so we are appending an HTML break and then the name of the country US on the second iteration you know this is going to return us US and then to that we are appending break and then the next country name which is India so when we reload this page what is going to happen within the development we should get all the five country names okay now this jQuery code, you know, it's, it's producing the output that we expect, but from a performance standpoint, there are two problems with this code. The first problem is that, look at this, this line will be executed for each list item within this collection. Since we have five list items, this line will be executed five times. That means jQuery is trying to find this DOM element, that is div result, within the DOM, that is the document object model, five times. It's going to search the DOM five times. So that's not, you know, efficient from a performance standpoint. Why are we unnecessarily searching it five times? Why don't we search it once, store it in a variable, and then reuse that variable? And that concept is called as caching right so instead of trying to find the same development within the dom five times let's find it once so outside of the each function let's create a variable let's call this div element equals we can use the selector search the dom find that element and then once we have found the element we can use that variable so div element dot html development.html so now it's not going to search the DOM for the same element again right we found it the first time and then we are using you know um, the cached version of that element okay so it's now going to search that element only once so this is much better from a performance standpoint but there is another problem the other problem is that this div element is actually a DOM element and what are we doing with that DOM element? We are updating that with new data. Now, updating DOM element frequently in a loop, again, is bad for performance. Instead, what you can do is use another variable, maybe a string variable, build this, that variable with the required data, and then outside of this each loop, you know, update that DOM element once that will again be much better for performance so instead of updating this DOM element five times we can update it once outside of the loop and for that let's create another variable let's call this result and let's initialize that with an empty string and instead of updating the DOM element what I'm going to do is use this variable so result plus equals we can get rid of all this okay result plus equals to that append an HTML break and then the text of the element that we are iterating over so now this variable is going to contain the HTML that we want to uh, display within this development so outside of this loop what we can do is now at the moment we don't even need this variable so I can um, you know get rid of that variable and then use the selector directly and use the result variable alright so let's reload this page we should get the same output but this version of the code is much better than what we had previously okay here you know we are trying to find that element only once and then updating that element only once and then again you know uh, within the each function that is within the loop we are not trying to search the DOM element or update the DOM element so whenever you use 
each function you know when you're looping through items in a collection you know keep these two things in mind don't try to find the same DOM element over and again if you have to ever you know find a DOM element in a loop try to find that outside of the loop once cache that in a variable and then use that variable and again you know if you want to update a DOM element um, you know don't try to update that inside a loop assign the value you know to a variable build that variable dynamically and then maybe update the DOM element once outside the loop that will be much better for performance so here is the example that we just discussed Thank you for listening and have a great day.